Hello. Hey, hey. how's it going? I like your background, Peter. You changed it. <laughs> uh, I think you're muted. Uh, might be the mic mute. Hi, right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That background comes up whenever I'm not signed in, and that's how I know, like, oh, I'm not signed in. I got. I got to click this. Click the one button. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a cat? Did you guys hear that? Yeah, I think that's one of Max's yeah, cats. That's yeah, Max's, Max's cat. Yeah, yeah. It usually oh, makes a few appearances uh, in the calls. I saw something move in, in in one of those corners. There's definitely something back there. Max, can you hear us? Um, or do you have audio issues? No, yeah, he's he he put in the chat. He's having, oh, I uh, see. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Rita. Hello. Uh, looks like the agenda is empty. Uh, anybody want to add anything uh, while we wait? Uh, Max's topic might have been for today. I'm not sure. Uh, anyone going to KubeCon Amsterdam? I'm curious. No, no one, just me. All right, well, um, if anyone does, yeah, Rita? Uh, I mean, I got my talks accepted, but we're waiting for my boss to approve travel. Ah, uh, budget approvals. Yes, it's a, it's a tough time right now, so. It is a tough time for, for everyone. Also, Amsterdam is, the trip itself is expensive. So. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, it, I just booked all my stuff, I'm like, oof. Expensive everything. Oh no. Are you yeah. pretty much confirmed? 
yeah, I'm confirmed. I, I, my talk was accepted. Um, and we're doing like an open meetup before it. So be good. So if you're there, definitely come to the open meetup. It'd be great to see you. Okay. <laughs> well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a fermion hey, short, Peter? Yeah, it is. I got this. I don't know. I think I got to one of the coupons. Uh, it's okay. very soft. It's a very, like, I was like, I, normally these shirts end up in a box and like in a corner, but I was like, this one was actually very soft. I'm like, I actually wear it. Uh, you I know a few folks one. there. <laughs> yeah. The How long they really did cute. a good one. Good shirts. Oh, the cat one is fun. They had that game. Um, I forgot what it was called, but yeah, they had that cat game. It was, it was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ronan, I think uh, he works on their designs. He's, he's, he's amazing, yeah. He, he used to sit next to me in the office. Uh, he's just really amazing. Is he like a designer or? Yeah, he's like a designer developer, um, yeah. He, he, cool. he, I think, developed a um, bunch of the, the, like the old days pages and like the Helm, I think he might have done it. Um, like the website, um, a few other ones, yeah. Porter, right, probably, um, yeah. Oh, he, cool. he wrote on the Dapper logo, which is just like, I love that logo. Dapper's also a good one. I, like, I am so not artistic that, like, I'll try to just like, like do anything. It is like, I don't know, here's like a weird squiggly line. Please turn this into something pretty. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to use chat, uh, not chat, uh, Dali for creating lo logos. Uh, Has that been going? Uh, it's, uh, it, <laughs> I even found one that was like, oh my God, this is great. Um, is, it, is it a logo for you and like your personal brand or like a logo for like things? Uh, no, creating? for just the random projects and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. We, yeah. We, it looks like we cloned Max. <laughs> <laughs> No, one of these is AI generated and one of them is real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to see because uh, the, the settings uh, page, like if I do the test mic, that all works. So I was like, well, maybe there's like bad cache data. So I was like clearing my cache and trying it. Well, I had a Zoom meeting to, to experiment with it. Did not work. So I do yeah. not know why Zoom hates my desktop, but it does. Is Zoom web client? Oh, wait, can you? Yeah, we, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was afraid <laughs> I had left something muted that <laughs> shouldn't be. Uh, uh, so I, I hear you. You said you had a talk accepted? Is that for, for me or for Rita? Uh, yeah, for, for you. Uh, yeah, I awesome. have. Yeah, I, so it's just a lightning talk and I'm doing, it's called uh, like, what if CNCF was a board game? And so essentially talking about like, uh, what it's like to enter and kind of play the game and what are the rules, who are the, who are the characters, uh, right? Like we have developer advocates, we have engineers, we have maintainers, right? And these are all like playable characters in the CNCF board game. And so I'm kind of gonna, gonna try to create this so five minutes to kind of explain what it's like and how to participate in the CNCF as if it was a board game. Nice. Oh, yeah. it's not like Game to... of Thrones. A <laughs> little bit, just a bit. Can we get a preview uh -oh. of it? <laughs> yeah, as, as, I haven't actually written any of it yet, so. Of course not. <laughs> I hear Plenty of is a, a board game that ruins friendships, so that's that's fun. W which uh, one ruins friendships? Diplomacy. Oh, okay. I don't know that one. I know. I've it's... heard. I've heard. Pandemic is another one where it's like. Oh, <laughs> Katan ruins friendships. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it erupts fights. Uh, uh, diplomacy, I've never played it, but it like takes weeks to play. And I hear like you're, it's all about like basically betraying people, like setting up deals and, and betraying people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people I mean, get like pretty salty. Any Anytime a game lasts over five hours anyway, you, Tensions are already really high. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what happens after that. Someone's going to lose and be emotional. Yeah, that's too much time investment for like a competitive thing, I feel like. I, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I remember, you know, things like StarCraft. I'd, I'd be like, ah, I've played this for so long, and then I lost the match. What? <laughs> oh, I remember when StarCraft 2 came out. I went out and bought the game at, like, the, the midnight release. And, it, I, like, everything was, like, midnight uh, 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 Eastern time, though. And so I remember, like, getting it and just, like, ugh, like me and my friends played, like, for, like, 12 hours straight in that first night. It actually, like, it just, like, destroyed me. I was like, I just ruined my whole week at school. <laughs> 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 made the weekend though so that's good. Definitely, definitely made the weekend it was a lot of fun sounds a lot like cncf projects too actually yeah you're like oh all what is this rabbit hole yeah it's all fun and games everyone wants diplomacy and partnerships and then destroy them <laughs> Ooh. so that's the talk eh <laughs> yeah uh I don't know. I I've been, I like I I I only have five minutes, so there's like so many different ways I could take it, and I need to like really hone in on like what exactly my message is. It's probably going to be something like, um, it's not a zero sum game, you know. Do as much as you can to help and connect and integrate with the other projects as you can, in order to right. The more you put out, the more you get back into a situation. Um, so it'll be something something like that. I'll figure it out probably three weeks before KubeCon. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. You need to make an actual game and then like distribute. It. We could be your guinea pig. I was thinking yeah. about that. Yeah, like the I think there was like a DevOps against humanity or something like that. Um, for like, I think there's oh, like yeah. a Kubernetes version of that. Yeah. Yeah, I I was, I was thinking like like a Dungeons and uh, uh, yeah Dungeons and Dragons kind of like board with like a. Uh, um, yeah, like like something like that though, where like it's kind of like, oh yeah, like this is like the game master settings board and and like use that as like a prop. Uh, I know who was it? It was Duffy at Detroit who had like a giant Rubik's Cube. So I was like, all right, if I bring a prop, more people pay attention. I need something that I can put up there. Do we have a Fippy the board game? No, but that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's a bunch of fippy things now, but I don't think it's a I don't think there's a board game yet. Lots of plushies. <laughs> yeah, and pins and books and yeah. Yeah. Fippy the murder mysteries. Uh, okay, going back to the agenda, does anybody have any topics for today? Uh, we have a few. Oh, shoot. I put mine in the wrong day. Uh, I, I thought so. Because <laughs> I, I didn't remember discussing that. Yeah, I was like, wow, there's a lot of topics today. Uh, okay, I'll put mine at the end, I guess. No, I just don't know what days work. How days work. Uh, so... Uh, I was, I was playing around with getting multi-engine stuff to work. OK, sorry, my cats just made a lot of noise. Uh, I was playing around with uh, getting multi-engine stuff to work in preparation for the, the shell uh, cap. Uh, and there's a, a schema uh, that I was kicking around that I thought uh, you guys might find interesting. Actually, I might join the meeting just because it's easier to share my screen on this desktop. Um, just to, to get your guys' thoughts. Hold on, clicking through all of that. You don't need to see... Okay, you don't see two of my faces. Um, all right, so technically I've joined audio, but... You can let me know if I live my messing around starts a lot of feedback. Uh, and it's a pretty simple, uh, it's a pretty simple uh, extension, I think. Uh, so there shouldn't be a lot to cover. Let's see, where did I put it? Tab put it there. All right. And how do I share screen? Sure. 
All right. Uh, can people see my screen? Does it need to be larger or anything like that? It looks fine on mine, but I have a very large screen, so I don't know. If someone has a small screen, it might be hard. All right. Uh, let me. I could bump it up a little bit. So, and just to give an example of this working too. So, uh, cute cuddle get dash f case required labels template dash o yaml. Uh, you can see we have just from the demo, uh, the the agile bank demo, the case required labels constraint template. It's behaving as it normally does. It's namespace test. It's uh, denied because all namespaces must have an owner level, uh, owner label, key cuddle, apply, simple, case required labels, template. Uh, so I just created a dummy driver because the cell cap is on bleeding edge Kubernetes code, and that's really hard to get to work with controller runtime. Uh, but if I uh, cube cuddle creates, uh, so the code has been swapped out underneath. So it's workable. Um, and the way... Uh, uh, can, I, can I interrupt you for a second? Uh, what's up? Uh, I don't I don't see your, your current prompt. I'm not sure if that's the same for everyone. Or maybe I'm just... I'm, I'm seeing a live feed. I'm seeing it as he's typing. Oh, OK. Maybe it's just me. Never mind, Max. Sorry about that. Hey, no worries. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's just the state I have things in. And what I've done here is I've just extended targets with a code entry that accepts a list of objects. And uh, it, uh, right now, that has two fields. One is engine, which identifies the name of the engine, right? So like simple or rego uh, in this case, where simple is the made up driver I have. Uh, and then source can store literally anything. It's type interface. And so that's where you would put the cell cap codes, however we decide to format it, uh, or where we would put the, uh, uh, you, you could put rego there. Like obviously for backwards compatibility, the rego fields would also stay where it is, right? Um, and sort of how this is parsed would be if you have the rego field, it's it's going to inject that into this list when it it parses the object. Um, kind of similar to how uh, constraint templates worked when they had version. And then they move to versions, right? Uh, when when they allowed multi-version CRDs, or sorry, not constraint templates, CRDs. When they had version and they went to versions. Um, except we're not going to require. I think there was like some equality thing. I don't think that quite makes sense. Uh, that's really all the high-level stuff. Everything else is kind of below the fold. Uh, I'm curious if people have thoughts about how this uh, should, uh, it, whether they like this high level pattern. Uh, so the, in this case, the engine is going to be something they sell and then the reject with is going to be the message. And then That's where is the, the cell, like the, the language itself going to go? Yeah, so there's no cell in this demo because, mm -hmm. again, controller runtime. Uh, probably the the language would be like Kate's admission because Kate's admission is also meant to be a little bit language diagnostic, and that's really the thing we're looking to wrap. Um, and then the where where it would go, it would go under source. So right now, so my simple driver just uh, expects source to be an object. And it has one field saying reject with, whereas IR reject all things. Mm -hmm. right? and, and you could see it going there. But for the cell cap, uh, this would be some subset of the cell object. 
right, to be determined. Uh, but basically what we would need is we would need enough information such that we could also write a controller that when it sees a constraint template pair using cell, uh, it will create those cell cap primitives, right? It, it has enough information to create those cell cap primitives. Uh, that uh, so, so then you're using embedded admission there. But then also, we can evaluate this in audit. Um, does that matter? And, and so the shape of source will we'll need to satisfy those conditions. But we're, this takes no opinion on what the shape of source should be. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, are we going to keep the validation as is, or do you think that'll also change? Keep like the, the, the oh, no. open API v3 schema stuff. That should be untouched. OK. So would the, in, in, instead of simple as the engine, it would be, uh, did you say, OK, it's a mission controller? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I. We could use whatever string, but uh, I was thinking something like that. Yeah, I mean, this is similar to what we played around with in, in the VASM stuff. I yeah. Part, we, okay. Sorry. I think the part that's confusing me a little bit is would target still be a mission case gatekeeper.sh because it's, isn't it technically calling the cell emission controller, not gatekeeper? I'm, I'm confused about that. So admission.cates.gatekeeper.sh, that just specifies the expected data to be validated, like the format of the expected data to be validated. So that's mm -hmm. saying, I, I expect an admission review object. So that's still the same. Right. Gotcha. Okay. But but you see, like because of the dot gatekeeper dot sh thing, it just makes it seem like it's like a gatekeeper thing. Or are or are you? Hmm. So target target is different from engine, right? Oh, target I is. I know. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's. Still, the gatekeeper making the decision, right? It's just going to use the cell. No. It depends, uh, right? Like, um, you could imagine if if a user has a heterogeneous cluster base or heterogeneous, or however you want to say it, um, where like some clusters have the cell cap, and and they have some older clusters that do not. Uh, they probably don't only want to have like one copy of policy, right? Uh, and and one thing we know for sure is the cell cap does not support audit, right? So when we're running audit, gatekeeper is evaluating the the cell cap code internally in its own process. Uh, when we're talking about admission, I think the preference would be if you're running in a cluster that has the cell cap, you you want to enforce that in process. Uh, but if you're not, uh, then you want to have gatekeeper do the evaluation, right? So gatekeeper becomes this like polyfill, essentially for the for the cell cap. So as far as admission goes, like the admission webhook goes, that would be the exception. Uh, you could also think about like gator test. Right, like if you want to run the cell code shift left, that's another thing the cap basically punts on, uh, and and where we would provide value, and that's that's also where target really is necessary, uh, is because if you're running something like Gator Test and you have multiple types of objects, like let's say you have a Terraform plan and you also have uh, Kubernetes resources, the target is going to let Gator Test know, hey, uh, the Kubernetes resources are relevant to this constraint template. The uh, 
uh, Terraform plan resources or not. Um, so let's say uh, this required labels thing, right? So let's say uh, on a mission, let's say engine is using the cell emission controller. Let's let's hypothetically say that's the configuration. Um, in that case, does Gatekeeper go ahead and create the um, the the policy the, the the cell policies? Yeah, Gatekeeper becomes effectively okay. a controller. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And then on a mission, uh, this the cell emission controller will process it like it does today. Uh, and then how does Gatekeeper know not to process it with, I mean, I guess because of the engine, it knows to do nothing, I guess. Yeah, that, that I don't think we've designed, but yeah, because of the engine, it knows, it will at least know that it's eligible to be used for the cell cap, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then whether the cell cap is turned on for the cluster, you could do some sort of capability discovery, right? Like do the cell cap resources exist? If so, try to create. Uh, we probably also want some sort of like knob that users can throw, right? If, if they're like, I, I wanna like slow roll my migration to the cell cap, but I do wanna like upgrade all my gates at once. Right or or they try migrating and something breaks or, or something like that. Um, having a way to enable or disable that behavior seems like a good idea. Uh, whether that knob is global or whether it's per template or per constraint or something like that, and we put it on I don't know an annotation on whichever object. I'm not sure which makes the most sense right now, but that answer would be different than this um, this change anyway, right? Because this is just getting the source code into the template. So like, let's say this is the, the template in the cluster, then uh, for Gatekeeper Audit, would it also process this? It, it would also like, look at the, I guess the cell policy resource and then uh, write, write the results to status or whatever, to the constraint yeah. status, okay. It would look at the cell policy engine, right? Just, mm -hmm. just to be clear, it, it wouldn't try to like look at the cell uh, yeah. policy, like the, the core Kate's resources, like we wouldn't try to like sync and cache those because we already would have templates. We would also have templates. So, so, so cell, I, I was a little confused by the cell policy resource uh, you're, you're phrasing there, because it could have meant that entry in code, right, the cell code, uh, or it could have meant the, the cap has this policy definition resource, right, the, that that's where the cap is reading the source code from, right? Yeah, sorry, I was, uh, to, to use the exact term, it's a validating a mission policy kind, right? Right, okay, so I do not think audit would read those. Okay, so where would, uh, how would audit know the, the cell uh, expression? Uh, it would read it from the constraint template. Oh, okay, and then it would, that would be under source? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So. So basically validating a mission policy kind would take that, right? And create a copy of it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So gatekeeper would be like the, uh, the central brain that facilitates these things. Yeah, like orchestrates how they're created and destroyed. Hopefully we can also get enforcement data. That's something that the cap is looking at. Um, 
it's not clear to me how that will work just yet. Like they're trying to do something with auto audit annotations and metrics. Um, I mean, you know how I feel about metrics and cardinality. Um, <laughs> And and that that part is I think TBD anyway, but the hope would be you you would interact with Gatekeeper as your first point of interaction, right? And if we wanted to use something like the um, uh, I'm I'm forgetting what we're calling it, but the the uh, pol the policy working group, the, mm -hmm. you know, that uniform reporting thing. Policy reports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the policy reports, if we wanted to, um, to have some way to convert it into a centralized representation like that, uh, you know, maybe Gatekeeper would be the vector for that. Thanks. So, yeah, control plane and reporting plane, essentially. So in the event that like if what if like users or operators make a modification on the valid dating emission policy resource directly, is Gatekeeper going to watch on those resources to make sure it's consistent? Yeah, I would expect that there's a possibility that there's validating admission resources that are created outside of Gatekeeper, right? Um, I'm not 100% sure what we want to do for those, right? Like, either they're out of scope, right? And people are, we just view that as like being sideloaded and Gatekeeper just does no opinion on them. Right, and unless there's a constraint template that says, hey, write this thing, uh, nothing happens. But if we have a template that is causing a policy definition to be created, we would, we would have a watch and we would be enforcing that it look an appropriate, the, the appropriate way. Um, the other option would be to also try to watch policy admission objects in addition to constraint templates and constraints and try to get them into audit let's because audit is really the functional gap there uh, and 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 do regular audits and try to report that but if we do that that raises questions around uh, like how do you identify a violation Right, and if you have constraints and temp like it's it's maybe doable, but it's it's a more complex scenario, uh, and seems to me to be something that we could do after the fact as well. Uh, like if we know we're interested in templates generating policy definitions, which I'm, in my view, that's, we, we are. Um, then if we want to go the other way as well, then that th those, those two don't seem like mutually exclusive approaches, right? And, and one could be added after the other. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think it's just one of those things that as soon as you introduce, uh, like it, it's one thing to say, uh, you want the users to come through Gatekeeper, right? But it's in reality, what's, the, you know, how can you uh, make sure it's this, the whole system is consistent if people aren't doing that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and that- <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. What's up? It's hard. <laughs> yeah, and in some ways, what we're bringing to the table, uh, we, we have a lot of sugar that uh, the cell cap doesn't, right, in terms of ephemeral enforcement. Uh, if you wanted shift left, if you wanted audit, the cell cap doesn't give that to you out of the box, right? So if people are aware they have these needs and they are writing their own templates or they're consuming templates from the, the library, um, 
this is problem solved and they're they're likely to be in the funnel that puts us in the it's fine to just use constraint templates camp however i because the cell cap is like parameterized policy right and and one thing that i could see it being interested in doing or people being interested in is as they're authoring extensions to kubernetes also having accompanying policies that lets users more easily lock down their objects and I, I i don't necessarily see those extension authors being bought into gatekeeper in any way shape or form and honestly just kind of like how we're disincentivized to work with third-party projects probably the opposite right they're like well if i write this policy definition uh then it just works for people so no matter what they have installed in their cluster. So why don't I just do that? Uh, the, there's a little bit of disincentive in the beginning, right? Because there's a slow rollout of new Kate's code. So maybe we catch some people in the polyfill, but then again, the, the cell cap is also working on a, a polyfill. Uh, so maybe yeah. not. Uh, yeah, so, so that is a difficulty here for sure. It could be, is, is, is your suggestion that we could have a watch on policy definitions and if there is no matching templates, just generate a matching template? I mean, that's one option. Um, I, I was just, just taking the comment that you know if if uh control templates are meant to be the source of truth then how do we make sure we don't go out of sync right 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 uh well you mean sorry constraint templates or policy definitions to be the source of truth uh constraint templates yeah, uh, and unfortunately, source of truth is up to the user, right? Like, they they kind of get to decide what everything is is written in. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, but I think it's sort of like the promise of this multi-engine solution is that, you know, obviously, it's like by using the constraint templates, what do you get, right? So right. if the goal is to say, hey, if you interact all your policies in the cluster with constraint template, then this is the one source of truth and it provides you the global view of everything, right? Right. Um, so how do you provide guarantees at that point? Um, otherwise it's like, well, then if the goal is if that's not possible, then then why would anybody write constraint templates? Why wouldn't they just go straight to the source, right? Right. Well, and and the why there would be you don't have audit, uh, you don't have shift Yet. left enforcement, uh, mm -hmm. you do not have referential constraints, right? right. Like Rego offers that, right? And the cell cap. You know, there's there's some debate around it. Um, there's, I even if it were to happen, it would be probably years down the road, and I am skeptical it would, uh, because that's a uh, they're they're very concerned about performance, right? And there's a different camp who who like see some functionality benefits, and maybe they come up with something limited for things like image signing or, or whatever, but um, uh, the expectation- For the record, I, I believe the benefit, I'm just being a devil's advocate. That's right, 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 right. No, I, it's good. Um, I And let me know if I'm like eating my own tail in, in the arguments, but I, I think that's a new one, The at least for today, it's talking about the referential stuff. So mm -hmm. there's there's incentive for users to do it. I don't think there's guarantee that uh, we can do, we can say constraint templates will be the source of truth because again, that's like up to the user, right? Like a, a user could install Gatekeeper and Caverno at the same time 
yeah. then neither of those is a source of truth. Exactly. Either. Yeah. Um, so, and, and we could do on cluster, we could do polyfill things like if we see a definition, create a template in response to that and use that as like uh, impetus for getting audit working and, and evenness of reporting, that kind of stuff. Uh, or I assume we could do it. I, I don't want to like blithely just say that's technically possible without thinking through because bi-directional is a little harder and we lose, we don't have control over what the definition looks like. So can we guarantee that will always be true? I don't know. Um, we could, and, and then like shift left wise, if we have the generator code on the cluster, we could provide a tool that does the same thing. Uh, if it sees a policy definition, shift left. Uh, so, so that's certainly a way of keeping us in the game in low effort, uh, per, with low effort for the user part in, in the case where, and I always use Istio, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna keep using Istio. Let's pretend Istio comes up with uh, policy definitions out of the box, right? And and the user wants to use those and they're not coming up with constraint templates because like whatever, like <laughs> same reason we, we don't have uh, config or uh, cert controller out of the box or cert manager out of the box. Um, then, uh, you know, how, it provides an easy way to deal with that situation. But again, that's that's assuming you could bi-directionally convert, which I don't think is impossible now, but that seems like a hefty organizational bet, right? Because that's a circular dependency. And if the cell cap does something we truly cannot accommodate, like maybe we could do imperfect conversion or something like that. And in my mind right now, the biggest danger with saying, oh, we are really like feature parity with the cell cap, no matter where you offer us is the way they're writing that they assume the Kate's API server exists and honestly is the thing evaluating the policy. Uh, and so that leads to design decisions like resource conversion is readily available and easy. It's like, well, that's true if you're in a live cluster and if you happen to be running the API server, right? Like if you're not in the API server, then it, you got to call conversion webhooks if you can. Um, and and what, what was the other one? Oh yeah, resource, right? They They, prefer not to match against kind, uh, but rather match against resource, which like might make sense from an API server perspective, but from a shift left perspective, kind is what you have, right? There's, there's no resource and there's no resource, there's no rest mapper to map from resource to kind or, or, or vice versa, right? So uh, that th those are places where I could see a little bit of friction if we wanted to be bi-directional, uh, at least in situations where there's not a uh, API server readily available to ping. Uh, and if there are places where there's an API server readily available to ping, uh, we, we do want to be a little bit careful about how we do that pinging just like for throttling purposes and, and increasing load on the API server. We've been talking a lot. <laughs> Want to also hear from others on the call if they have any feedback, thoughts. Oh, uh, it, I'm assuming crickets. I, I'm curious if uh, you find what I'm saying persuasive. Like, do, does it seem like 
we're thinking on the right path or is there, is there like a fundamental flaw that you could see? Uh, sorry, who are you asking? I was asking you. Um, I mean, I, I, I get the benefit. Um, I, I think the, uh, we just need to like show really good demos to clearly demonstrate what are the use cases where this makes sense. Um, to your point, right? Like, for example, if a user own, or if a company only cares about, um, you know, non-referential policies and they don't care about audit, they don't care about shift left, they don't need this, right? So it just depends on the use case. Uh, and I would say only a subset would require something like this. Um, and, and I think uh, what you have now is a really good start. Okay. I have one cool. question. Um, if you are let, uh, having the, the cell admission controller do, do the, the work for admission, uh, does that uh, decrease the the um, the, the, the uh, resource consumption for the gatekeeper for for the controller manager specifically? Uh, for the 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 partition that's running the webhook, probably. Right, there's a certain amount of, I, so so it's 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 tough to say in absolute terms, right? There's almost certainly less CPU usage, right? Because there's just whole kinds constraint kinds you're you're not evaluating, uh, which is good for CPU. Uh, in terms I'm, of RAM, sorry. oh good. No, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, in in terms of RAM. That's harder to say, right? Because the end state for this probably is someone, if they're using the admission webhook, they're probably using it for referential constraints, right? Which means there's cache data, means the rego evaluation needs to go through the cache data, right? So the, the peak RAM usage, maybe not. Uh, and then also uh, there's, there's a certain amount of like latency for Golang's garbage collection. Right, so that uh, there, even though we evaluate the constraints, at least currently in serial, which would tend to, if you only saw one inbound request, cap the maximum memory usage to the most memory intensive constraint. That is not necessarily true in practice, right? Because there's going to be some spill over uh, just because garbage collection either hasn't triggered or, or is, has yet to run or is running, that, that kind of thing, um, which would tend to actually argue for reduced usage in the very specific circumstances. Uh, ultimately, I think for the webhook though, because of the referential stuff, that would be controlling for RAM and CPU usage again should decrease, which in terms of scalability and serving QPS probably is the better thing. Because you're calling the emission controller instead of OPA, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, so, but Sirtesh's question was, for the gatekeeper pods, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, because a lot of the load is being would be handled by the admission controller. Right. That so you're more... not triggering the local OPA. Right. Uh, yeah. I it would still be triggered. I I imagine for referential constraints for the foreseeable future. Sure. Uh, sure. And, but we're and... talking about let's say let's just say Kate's require labels, right? So currently mm -hmm. you will call OPA. OPA will do its evaluation, right? But now you're calling the mission control, the cell emission controller, and then that will res return the result, right? So, right, right. Uh, and there's there's an interesting path there of if you only have non-referential constraints, and so everything is Kate cell. Do you even want the webhook to be called, which is 
an interesting thought. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we don't need the web book at that point. Right. And then also, when you get rejected, let's say it's a blocking uh, policy, when you get blocked, when when the cell um, emission controller rejected first, and then the web hub would then reject it again because Oh, I would I would assume that we would just would not load these constraints into the webhook. I see. Yeah, that. Okay, so so then it's just the constraint template converts to the validating emission policy, and then just hands it off to Cell basically at that point, the the entry controller. Um, yeah, but someone what might also want without a webhook, so so gatekeeper doesn't in, introduce additional latency. Right, right. In that case, it wouldn't, right? Because there would we wouldn't be creating a constraint for it. Right. Well, and and but that's that's the rub. Like it's it's always possible to run gatekeeper without the validating webhook, right? right. That, that infrastructure is possible today. It'll be possible tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, uh, this just basically carries the webhook to the cell admission controller versus being on the gatekeeper. Right. Yeah. Then what about the decision logs? Like today, because everything is assumed, uh, you know, open policies, right? Therefore, gatekeeper has, would know when the certain things are denied or war in warning, right? But because now we're handing that off to the mission controller, gatekeeper wouldn't know those decisions right right and the so the design goal of the cell cap was always to be a middleware right like it it it, it said the, the the core idea was hey we want to create primitives that they're they're calling in policy frameworks can use to to more better do policy, right? Um, and so as part of that, being able to read those results, I do think is a critical component of that. I don't know if I buy the current story they have, which honestly is like the cap is still under development. I don't think. Um, this bit is final by any means, uh, but they're they're looking at throwing audit events, right? And they're they're looking at uh, publishing, I believe, like Prometheus metrics around rejections. Uh, whether they can get the kind of information density you'd actually need. Through Prometheus metrics specifically, uh, I don't. I'm, I'm skeptical, right? Uh, because those should be less information dense. Uh, you you could read the cap to see. Like I think I chatted you a discussion around that at, at one point uh, on on the cap doc. Um, but. Sorry, I can't remember for the rest of the people <laughs> where where it is off the top. But if you search the comment history on the cap, it should be there. Uh, the and and audit resources like those probably honestly shouldn't be visible from the cluster. So so there's something missing there in my view for sure. Um, I guess like the TLDR here is I think. If the goal is to have constraint template as like the front facing thing, uh, then we need to somehow get the information from other engines, right? Yeah. Like, and I think that's a missing piece. Yeah. Right. For audit, like it's business as usual. But if, if you're doing something like log violations, right? Well, or I think if even with like audit, right? Like, what if there's like specific things in validating a mission policy that the constraint template doesn't have visibility to, then Autumn may miss that as well. I'm not sure if there is a use case. I'm just thinking out loud. So, and when I say audit, I mean gatekeeper audit, to be clear. Yeah, yeah. so was oh. I, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I just meant like, like for example, validating a mission policy has like the match 
sorry, the resource rules, right? So it would know exactly which resource to apply it against. Like, would will we have that information in constraint template? Are, are we saying everything that is encapsulated in validating a mission policy would be exposed, would be part of source? Well, this uh, is target. Uh -huh. This is a strong, I think, argument for do constraint template, don't do core resources. Is that constraint template? Or when you're talking about the source of truth stuff, is constraint template would be orchestrated in such a way that you wouldn't need resource name to be selective for kind, for instance. Um, but uh, I mean, this is this is true with uh, Rego today, right? Like if you wrote a Rego policy that looked at the resource field, uh, that would work in the webhook, but it would not work in audit, right? And Rego in that case would fail open. Uh, so it's an existing reality. I think the the difference here might be that the cell cap kind of encourages that reality, at least with regard to selecting against resource, right? Because there's no mechanism, like people do want to scope their policies and there's no mechanism to scope against kinds. Direct, there's no direct mechanism. You could write cell code to do it. Um, how much people will want to do that is a good question. Um, yeah. I don't know. I um, personally am annoyed by the resource thing. But go ahead. Sorry, I, I do have to draw for another call, but um, I, I think there's a lot of remaining TBD. So maybe we should, I don't know if you want to like create an issue or, or doc where we can continue the conversation. I'm not sure, but yeah. Well, yeah. do we want to do this in a meeting or do we want to have like a side design session, thinking session stuff for this. That works too, yeah. SI, SI1 might be good just so that it's more targeted and we don't spam people, I don't know. I, or, or we could do it in, in one of these weekly calls, it doesn't matter to me. How about I put one of those like surveys in the chat where people are interested in attending, but their times, uh, yeah. or not okay. in the chat, sorry, because I don't know if everyone's a maintainer, so I'll put it in the doc. The meeting doc. Sounds good. And, uh, yeah. So everyone look out for that. I'll put it in today's meeting doc. Let's say by Friday, I'll put it in uh, just okay. so you're not like having to pull it. Uh, okay. And yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Have a great one. Good to see everyone. Bye.